Welcome to the Women's March Canada podcast, making the equality of women in Canada the new norm. I'm your host, Melissa Durrell, inspiring, uniting, and leading the charge for the advancement of women across Canada. This is episode 16. We're titling it, She Leads. And that is because we are giving a warm welcome to our guest, Cassandra Myers. Cassandra, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, Melissa. Of course. Now, Cassie is the founder of She Leads, an educational tool that uses engaging games to measure leadership skills and develop potential in young girls. Before that, Cassie was entrepreneur in residence at the University of Waterloo and a community manager at HackerGal. So, Cassie, thanks for joining us today. I think the thing we would like to discuss with you first, of course, is um, and something that you've been quite involved in is uh, the uh, high school shooting in Parkland, Florida, where 17 people were killed, many of them students. And I understand there's been a, a lot of attention here in Canada in schools around that. Mm-hmm. Can you tell me what, uh, what you're hearing and what's happening? Mm-hmm. So there's a lot. Um, what's really interesting about uh, the shooting is that it really has exemplified just the power of the young people and the advocacy in the community that this kind of generation can create. And unfortunately, this is kind of out of a really um, devastating um, event and it's, it's just horrible. But um, the students have really rallied together and created this kind of movement that's been able to, um, been able to collect just national attention. And so even that, um, even the speech by, um, I believe it, I believe it was Emma Gonzalez, one of the students, one of the survivors of the shooting, um, mm-hmm. just her powerful wor- words and her, able, her ability to kind of not only highlight um, gun violence and show um, just the, just attract the attention to the importance of that matter, but also show that the young people are here, they're able, and they have something to say. And the ability for um, her to, for that entire group to gain um, that kind of platform and share their voice in such a powerful way um, draws attention from other young people at the University of Waterloo um, in KW region um, and just shows, it speaks for our entire generation. So what are people in Canada doing? Like, what are some of the students doing and, and mm-hmm. thinking about how do they support um, their, their counterparts in America? Mm-hmm. I think a lot of it is in just sharing um, that kind of message or to sharing that message, engaging in dialogue and speaking about the issues a lot. So um, while we do have a lot of... Um, interesting news and interesting events happening here on the ground in Canada. Um, America obviously enters our like dialogue in class, our dialogue in events quite more often than not. Um, and how we speak about these events and the kind of voices that we highlight when we speak about these, um, when we speak about these, um, these kind of events and these kind of, uh, um, and Tra- these travesties, for, yeah. there's travesties, um, is how we advocate for them. So, speaking not about the shooter, but more about the victims, what they're saying and how we're moving forward and how we're catalysting to a change from this. It's interesting. um, I'm a little bit older than you. You're (laughs) uh, um, the uh, Ecole Polytechnic uh, when the women Mm -hmm. were uh, shot in engineering school. And it was, you know, sort of unspoken. We don't mention the shooter's name. We talk about the victims. Um, and and I, that still actually is the case for the most part um, as we uh, do a memorial every year. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, you know, I think the one thing that's really struck me about this Florida shooting is um, it's not the first time. No. And, um, and it feels like every time we get to this point, that there might be change and it doesn't happen. And so how can Canadian students support their American counterparts to help them, I guess, not be frustrated and continue to fight the right fight. Mm -hmm. And I think there is um, a lot of young people um, feel uh, a little bit discouraged from voicing their opinions or speaking on such a large platform um, because there is a lot of like still like stereotype and stigma attached to um, being young and it's a little bit scary to come up and have such a large voice, especially on such a controversial issue. Um, And I think um, what's really amazing about Waterloo and the KW community is that there's so many spaces 
um, safe spaces created for um, young people to get engaged, to create a dialogue and make a change. So even myself, I was in the Greenhouse Social Impact Incubator um, last term and I currently mentor the current cohort and students in that, um, in that organization are speaking out on violence against women, um, female trafficking, um, energy sharing, environmental issues, and really um, like serious topics. And it kind of gives them the safe space and the safe community to speak openly about that. And not only the safe space and the space safe community, but the platform to do so. So their voices are amplified in a way that um, isn't always accessible by um, a lot of people, um, a lot of different um, university communities or just different uh, cities and towns. So that's what I think is incredibly special about um, about our space and even um, like closer to the um, female community is the um, the women's center on campus. And so the events that they hold that are specifically created to um, set a platform for young people and especially young women to talk about the things that are heavy on their hearts lately and speak about the things that are important to them. So the Feminist Poetry Slam, um, we have um, our Women's Week where we just have a bunch of um, events that are at, the marketed as safe spaces where you can come as you are and speak um, freely. It's those kinds of things that, um, those kinds of um, things and those kinds of places where this dialogue happens. And I think the support is made by bringing issues like this to those spaces and to those events um, and just speaking unapologetically about them. So it's interesting to me that um, the University of Waterloo has created this really, uh, I think, uh, incredible safe space. How does leadership come out of that? How do you teach? Is that you're obviously getting a lot of people to come and gather. How from there do you start to teach leadership skills? Mm -hmm. And I think those ideas that start yeah. to on those leaderships, right? Like you get angry enough or passionate about something and then you don't want to lead the charge. So how do you, how do you go from one to the next? Mm -hmm. And I think the university has done a lot of amazing things, but I do um, still in saying that believe it does have a long ways to go. So even um, last week I was at a talk about race, gender, um, equality in the university and how the university itself is removing um, historical structures that prevented uh, minorities like women and colored people and especially colored women from advancing in this space and so the university while has been very open to a lot of change um, and accepting still has a long ways to go so I really think for change in the university it's about um, the specific leaders in that community um, the female leaders and the male leaders who have created spaces like the Women's Center have launched programs like Greenhouse um, and um, are just making a change independently. And then that's how is that being permeated into the bigger structure that still um, needs to be, um, still has a little bit um, of ways to go. And sorry, I actually went on the tangent a little bit there, but what was your question again? No, we're good. I actually want to talk okay. to you. She yes. So oh, how okay, did you yes. Come up with this idea? Mm -hmm. So I actually started working with Hacker Gal, um, and that was an amazing experience. They're still doing um, a lot of great work. They actually ran their last hackathon, which reached over uh, over 300 girls across Canada. And so what was really interesting about that experience is um, I really got to see a, an audience even younger than myself engaged in a very powerful way. Um, and I think there's a lot of amazing work being done in STEM and in STEAM, um, in KW and in Canada. And then I was imagining that there's a lot of innovation happening at the university and in the STEAM um, industry, but then how is that being translated to more um, more spaces that are thought of as have been a little bit more traditional. So um, leadership courses, leadership camps um, are doing really amazing work. And how do we bring innovation to that space to kind of engage the younger people more effectively, more strongly. And now more so than that, we were focused a lot on leadership development. So what we did was we um, created a platform where girls could write stories that are turned into video games and shared with other girls um, about specific leadership skills. So there's a set of eight skills that are currently encouraged in the Ontario curriculum. Um, they're coined as learning skills and um, we spoke to a lot of educators and those skills directly reflect what kind of academic, um, the academic state of that student, um, how they're acting in the classroom. And it's really been determined as the most, one of the most important parts of the report card. So how do we um, educate students about what those really mean and the tangible ways they can reflect that in their own lives? Because there are like really big news articles where these skills are exemplified just amazingly, but then how do we bring that down to a smaller bite-sized scale so that 
um, an eight year old can understand it and apply it in her small space. And so like a 12 year old can do the same as well. And so that was what we were really focused on last term. And so we worked um, with the YWCA, closely with the YWCA Cambridge um, and piloted it with those girls there. And it was really amazing to see the progression of the girls throughout that program. So um, in the beginning, um, they, um, it was really difficult for them to highlight a female leader. And so we posed that question out and said, can you name one? And they're looking around and we looked to their facilitator and it was really difficult for them to grasp those names. And it's not because they're not there and they don't see them, but it's because how do we attach a definition to that so that they're easy for them to pull and say, you know, I'm like her and that's um, great and that's important. I'm gonna exemplify that in my own life. And so we engaged in a dialogue about um, our sisters, our parents, our teachers, um, kind of brought it closer to home. And then we went through the story writing process where they wrote about their own lives and how they felt about um, we chose self-regulation, how they practice self-regulation. So some of them wrote about like being at the park with their mom, calming themselves down when they're upset um, or hurt. And so after that, they actually, it was really interesting. They self-identified as a female leader. So they talked about bus patrol, which I learned a lot about um, <laughs> and I didn't know it was a thing, um, but they spoke a lot about bus patrol and these small ways that seem that not small ways, but these um, ways that they're applying these really complex skills and abilities. Um, mm -hmm. And how do we give them a platform to talk about those small, to talk about those little individual wins and um, highlight them for just the amazing um, experience that they are. And so now so more so we're kind of focused on assessment. Um, and so we're pivoting a little bit and we're seeing that there's so many organizations that are doing amazing leadership work and we don't want to in any way um, try to reinvent the wheel, but we do know that with our education, with the kind of technology that we have access to, we can help those organizations then measure um, the progression of their programs and kind of mine these insights from these, of this amazing work that they do to then share that with other people. Mm -hmm. And so we participated actually in, we were, came, we, Met, we got to the second round of a pitch competition just a few weeks ago and unfortunately didn't make it to the final round, but it was um, around the UN Sustainable Development Goals. And so we chose gender equality and we were focused on um, gender statistics specifically. And so um, gender equality can't be achieved without um, gender statistics, which inform gender policy, which fund the programs that um, work towards gender equality and um, really create advocacy around gender inequality. And so um, out of all the um, gender, all out of all the countries, only 13% um, attribute a budget towards gender statistics. And because of that, 80% of the indicators that the UN uses to measure gender equality aren't being accounted for. Wow, so, how do you improve if you don't measure? Exactly, and so um, even just, um, it was one of the old secretaries, uh, the previous secretaries of the UN said, you know, what, what cannot be measured cannot be changed. And so there's amazing organizations that have access to this kind of data where we can share with other people in this space and say, you know, this is the problem, this is kind of change that we're creating. And so now more so we're focused on how can we create a solution to help collect all that data and share it with different organizations who all are working towards gender equality to then um, like contribute to gender statistics and um, create these changes that are, that are so badly needed. So speaking of statistics, mm -hmm. uh, I think you actually put these together, but so <laughs> Canadian women represent 4% of CEO positions at top 500 companies, 20% of university professor roles, 25% of government seats, 20% of corporate board positions. Mm -hmm. I mean, in, you're deep into this. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're obviously measuring it, mm -hmm. but at this point, women aren't measuring up. We're not getting that 50%. What and, do we need? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And especially so in Canada, while like there's indicators that measure who's at the management um, positions, who's in politics, um, and that really makes sense for Canada as well as more so for developing um, regions where that's very much where the inequality lies. But in Canada, it's up to our governments and our institutions and our organizations to then measure where the inequality is deeper in Canada. So it's not only in our representation and policy, but it's about um, the, um, the attitudes and the behaviors that are in these institutions that are permeating to, that are contributing to our inequality. And so how do we measure, um, measure those variables that are really um, pushing our inequality at home? Mm -hmm. Because it's our responsibility to then dig deeper and find um, what's contributing to this. Um, but I think speaking to how are we changing that and how we're 
really addressing the underrepresentation of females in leadership. And I think um, one example that I had was had the opportunity to be a part of um, a few weeks ago was Mayor Jaworski's Women in STEAM event. And so um, that was just an amazing. This is a national broadcast, so I'll just say. Oh, uh, sorry. Jaworski, that's okay. Jaworski, Mayor uh, uh, Dave Jaworski is the mayor of the city of Waterloo. Oh, yes. So there you go. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, I thought I did something wrong, but he um, put together, him and his um, team put together this amazing women in STEAM event that had, an, I can't remember the exact numbers, but an amazing ratio of young um, elementary and high school students, I believe it was, um, and female um, mentors in the region. And so anywhere from myself still in, um, finishing up my five year program um, and um, women in politics, women in science, women with their PhDs, women with their own companies, and it was an amazing way to kind of bring um, those two levels that are often the not just because of like age and access and places where people are just completely separate and bringing it a little closer together where they're, we're engaging in dialogue, we're face to face and we're really putting a face and a voice and a story to the name. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that was an amazing event and I was telling um, them afterwards that how um, exciting it was to be a part of that because as while I was there as a mentor, um, on paper, I feel just being around those amazing women who are just well, like where like in places that I aspire to be, um, mm -hmm. was just so powerful for me. And I can't even imagine that, um, then being, having access to that kind of program at such a young age, mm -hmm. um, what kind of impact that then has to their, um, next 10 years out. And so I think, um, the, ability of like communities like KW um, to kind of create platforms where the women in leadership are highlighted and accessible um, makes all the difference and then empowering the younger generations to say, you know, that I want to be just like her. Right. Amazing. Mm -hmm. So how did you get involved in this? Mm -hmm. uh, were you always interested in the, were you the class president and uh, uh -huh. all that kind of, or how did you, how, what made this your passion? Mm -hmm. So I was actually, um, and I tell this, I do um, start entrepreneurship programs for first year students. Um, now is one of my, my part-time jobs. And I always tell them I was very dormant for the first three years of um, university. And it took me a while to really um, find where my place was and find where I felt comfortable um, to really participate. Um, and so yeah. it was actually at my last placement um, where I got to be a part of HackerGal, where I realized that there's this huge um, community of women doing amazing things. Um, and um, Lucy, the founder of that organization, um, really took me under her wing and really mentored me and, in a powerful way. And I got to be really close to the change that was happening there. And I'm incredibly grateful for that. Um, I'm actually meeting her today later um, to catch up, which is going to be awesome. But um, it was through that experience that um, I really saw like a small idea growing into, oh, I'm so dark, growing into something bigger. Um, and so um, it was through that that I kind of got in, in, immersed in that kind of space. And I started to reach out to the organizations closer to home and closer to campus to see where I could bring my ideas and where I could start um, applying some of my skills to make a change. And so um, I went to the Center for Peace Advancement on campus, which hosts, hosts um, a bunch of social ventures who do amazing work. So um, they do, um, yeah, they do amazing work. So there's like Marlena's Books who creates um, educational material for people with dementia. Um, and there's like Tree Education who does peace education for elementary school classes. And so I went there and I spoke with Michelle Jacket and she's one of the, um, um, one of the, um, she, she works at the center and I kind of shared my ideas and she sat down with me, took a real interest. And from then I was moved to Greenhouse, um, where I was immersed in that community, which is, I can't not stress enough to any um, university students how um, powerful a strong community can be. And so with the mentors there, with Tanya as the director, um, and with Brendan, I was able um, to really grow as a person and then find out, okay, now what really matters to me? Mm -hmm. And so while um, I am very much involved in um, the women in STEAM and the women in STEM um, community. Um, I was more interested in how do we engage people from all industries? How do we speak to the people in arts? Um, we're often a little bit 
um, need a little bit more love at the University of Waterloo? Um, and how do we um, open a platform? Um, how do we create some kind of platform for them to feel like they can contribute? Um, if it's not in tech and it's not in STEM, how do we then encapsulate all of those in one? And that's, that's leadership to me. You need to turn your camera just a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Other way. There you go. There you are. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Tell me a little, because I mean, it sounds like your journey has been uh, like almost blessed. Like you walk yeah. into a room and people have been like, do this, do this. Uh, was there a point or something that you had to overcome to get, yeah. you know, to, there's always struggles with every amazing opportunity, right? Um, so what kind of advice would you have for uh, young women out there that are trying to pursue their passions? Mm -hmm. And I think um, I'm a little bit guilty and sometimes trying to um, not always speaking to those more difficult times and not that they're not there and very um, present, but it's tempting to almost paint this beautiful picture to try to get more people to come in and do it um, because it seems so like appetizing. Um, yeah. But there have been a lot of um, really not um, amazing times. Um, and I think um, like I have right now, even just looking down at my laptop, like three stickies, that just have like quotes of like, keep going. Like even in the past two weeks, we've been rejected from like three different competitions. Right. Um, and that's just like a small scale and I won't really get into like the um, more deeper things. But I think um, having a strong community and having a great support system has really been um, what has gotten me through it. So even um, we pitched and won funding at the last competition and right the day before someone told me um, like you don't deserve to be here and you didn't really earn your spot and I like that was devastating and so I like um, it's like things like that that are like often discouraging um, and I think I have to take some kind of responsibility and ownership to really speak out about these because it's the mentors that I have who have then related back to me about the times that they have been set back a little bit and they felt some difficulty that's really pushed me to do better um, and really pushed me to keep going beyond that. And so um, I'm almost, um, I think, a little bit um, desensitized to the more the rejections and the um, not so friendly things that happen, which happen a lot. Um, because, you know, while there's amazing um, feminist and um, female community at Waterloo, we're still very much a tech oriented university and startup oriented university that, in my opinion, has just more recently been more open to social ventures and more open to people talking the gender equality unapologetically and openly. Mm -hmm. And um, that's been a little bit difficult to then enter a space of people who come from a different community and try to um, tell them that what you're saying is important and of value and just as valuable. Um, and so I think always remembering like why you're doing what you're doing and keeping yeah. a strong support system has really been um, everything to me. And stickies on your laptop. And lots, lots of stickies <laughs> on my laptop. Um, so let's just blue sky here, mm -hmm. Canada, 20 years in the future. Ugh. What do you think? Where are we going to be? What do you want to see? Yeah. Maybe not where are we going to be, but what do you want to see? Mm -hmm. I, I want to see, I, it's funny. I was actually watching, um, a show about the future, um, on Netflix and I, there was some, uh, sexism in it and I just screamed and I, I was watching my friend and I said, they didn't achieve gender equality yet. And it was, <laughs> so in the future, there's no grass or trees or anything. Um, but um, gender equality, I want to see one thing, and I think just on a small scale to really encapsulate everything is that I want to be able to, and this is something I haven't achieved yet and speaks like a call out to maybe to the university, is I want to be able to walk into my classes and I want to see representation. I want to see um, my female professors. I want to see my colored female professors. And I want to see my classmates who look like me. And I think there's a misconception that just because you're in arts, there's an incredible amount of diversity. And even speaking back to the, um, to the panel I was listening at a few weeks ago about race, gender, um, and the university is that while we have diversity, diversity is an inclusion. Mm -hmm. And so while we have a, we may on paper have a wide range of women and colored people and colored women, um, how do we um, create a space where they can learn better and feel included and really thrive in the classroom. Mm -hmm. And so I think that would be meaningful change to me. Cassie, you're a rock star. <laughs> no, you are. I actually saw you at the monologues and I was, I saw you first from afar in the crowd and I was like, I know her. And then um, <laughs> I was in the crowd and I'm like, I know her. Um, mm -hmm. So I really just like, um, 
you're the rock star. Oh, well, thank you. So yes, uh, we, uh, <laughs> a bunch of us women performed in the vagina monologues and I was that like, was amazing. One of them on Valentine's Day, which was, uh, yeah, I'm blushing because I'm not an actor. <laughs> But it was a ton of fun. I tried to get, I skipped class and told my professor, I'm like, I need to go to this. And I tried <laughs> to, I posted in our group for the class and I said, maybe we should all go. Um, and he said, you can go. Uh, yeah. but Don't take the rest of the class with yeah, you. Yeah, he said, yeah. That, it's not allowed. Um, <laughs> but I had the best time. Well, thank you. Yeah, it was a ton of fun. Thank you so much, Cassie. I look forward to watching as your, as you, your leadership skills grow. Uh, yeah. and you know, I have an 11 year old girl, so I can't wait to introduce you to her because I know you'll inspire her. So that's fantastic. So that's our guest to Cassandra Myers. And thanks to everyone who's tuned in to listen. Your comments are welcome and always encouraged. Please subscribe to our Women's March Canada channel and receive updates every time we upload a new podcast, which is usually about once a week. Our mission across Canada is to stand together in solidarity with our partners and children for the protection of our rights, our safety, our health, and our families, recognizing that our vibrant and diverse communities are the strength of our country. This is the Women's March Canada podcast. You can find us on Twitter at Women's March CDA and our website, womensmarchcanada.com. I'm Melissa Darrell. Have a great day.